field of political science. Um, I would like to introduce myself. So this is a beautiful picture of myself. Uh, and I'm Esther, I'm a third year political science and international studies double major. Uh, I have uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, through all my year at UCI, I have been trying my best to be involved on campus. I have been a peer consultant at the Social Science Academic Resource Center. I'm an ambassador at the Deconstructing Diversity Initiative, and I'm also a, an administrative assistant at the Racial Justice Center on campus. Beyond the School of Social Sciences, I have a, I have been leading my own nonprofit organization to uh the name of the pro the organization is growth at uci i have been leading the organization to serve the refugee community in orange county um so if you guys have any questions throughout the presentation uh you're welcome to submit your question at the end of the presentation and uh even though i'm not the expert in Plato science, uh, I would love to share my experience in the field with all of you. So what's Plato science? Plato science is a scientific study of politics. It is a social science dealing with system of governance and power and the analysis of Plato activities, political thought, Plato behavior, and um, associated constitutions and laws. As you may know, there are five subsections in political science, uh, including American society and politics, comparative politics, international relations, public law, and public theory. Uh, here at UCI, to achieve uh, to successfully achieve your political science bachelor's degree, it, all the students um, have to are required to take all the introduction classes to each of the subsections. And later on, based on your uh, interest, you can choose the upper division classes in uh, any of the subsections here that you're interested in. So um, if you like obtain a bachelor, you're good to go for like many entry level position in the field of politics. Um, Beyond bachelors, uh, there are masters, JD, and a PhD programs. Uh, masters are masters in political science are often required if you want to, uh, like, have a specialization. For example, I myself, I really want to be involved in either foreign policy or in the national security. So after graduate from UCI, I would like to. Um, go to a master program and study uh, like international security. So there are two types types of master programs, including academic master program and professional master program. For academic program, um, the like the program you take will count for the like first or second year of the PhD. Uh, for professional masters, after to graduate from master, you will go directly directly to your uh, field. You will go find a job after you graduate. And if you would like to work in law, uh, it 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 is required to take a like three year program in JD. Uh, if you want to be a professor or any like certain leadership roles, it is required to take the PhD program in political science. And the PhD program all often take uh, four to six years of study. So here are the major career paths in political science. Um, so uh, the popular choices always uh, are like the state, local state or federal government. Um, uh, if you are, I know that for me and many of my friends who are non-US citizens, you are welcome to work for the international affairs, nonprofit organizations, or pr private business. Of course, um, if you are non, 
non-US citizen, you can also work for your own country's government. And these are all the um, um, field you can choose for, you can choose from. Um, and here are the, I wanna show you the ways to prepare for going to these um, fields. And the first uh, suggestion I would like to give to you is to do research in political science. Um, to get involved in research, the, so the School of Social Sciences offers the Summer Academic Enrichment Program. And I would like to sh share my screen and show you the website of SAEP. Here is the website for SAEP. So SAEP is an intensive five-week on-campus program that's designed for low-income and first-generation students uh, to do research. Uh, for the SAEP program, you do not have to find an academic advisor to guide your uh, research. Instead, the SAEP program will pro like we'll uh, have professors to lead you uh, through like conducting your own research. So I, I will like sh uh, show all the links at the end of the, of the presentation. So don't worry about it. Um, if you're, let me see. I, I will just put my screen like this I, because I have to show you different other links later on. Uh, uh, if you are a non low, if you are not a low income student or if you are not a first generation student, you can always choose to develop your research through the undergraduate research uh, opportunity program, which is uh, like which is Europe, like people call it Europe. And um, through like Europe, it's um, this program helps to fund uh, the undergraduate student with their um, research. For example, last year, I did my research in Tibetan refugee and Tibetan migration and the Europe uh, helped me found the research and they gave me like about $500. So it will be a good um, opportunity for you if you want to, you need help with funding your own research. And to get involved in the Europe, you, uh, you can click on opportunities and Europe opportunities. So here are the uh, like the Europe opportunities that you can join. Uh, so for me, I did the fall proposals. Basically, you just need to find a research advisor and you find a um, you find a research advisor and fill out the application and write a proposal. And then uh, you can submit all of them to their the program and they will help you fund your research it's as simple as that and uh if you don't know how to do it and if you're this is the first time for you to do an individual research you can also always click on the detail and requirement and they will show you step by step of like how to uh, make a proposal and how to develop a research and as I have mentioned, I will post this link later on, like in the chat. Yeah, that's uh, SCEP and Europe. And another recommendation from me is um, to join the honors, the honors program here at UCI for political science. So currently I'm in the political science honors program and I'm doing my research on uh, Internet, like a transnational human trafficking. Um, so for if you want to do if you want to join honors program, I highly recommend you to find a research advisor right now. So later during the uh, summer, you can submit your um, research background and a proposal to the uh, UCI political science department. And then like, it's definitely take the 
like department people like for a while to like get everything approved. So my recommendation is to find a research advisor right now, and then you can like submit your application through this website. And uh, uh, like this program, like for the first half of the program, you have to take a honors thesis course with Dr. David Phoenix. And then this course is designed for you to learn how to conduct a research. And after the, this course, it will be in next fall. And after this, um, you know, this uh, thesis uh, course, you, ha uh, you have an uh, option to join another course with the chancellor. Uh, for me, because the course uh, that is taught by the chancellor is not really interesting to me. So I'm not in that class right now, but for winter and spring quarter, these are the like time that are prepared for you to finish uh, your own research. Yeah, that's for, um, all the research opportunities. And of course you can also like to prepare to become a like good candidate in future career. Uh, you can also intern at the um, at the Washington DC uh, through the UCDC program. So um, they have different terms in UCDC program, including uh, fall term, winter term, spring term, and summer term. And um, I encourage you to apply for the fall term because uh, fall is when like, you know, you when you will get the most opportunity. So um, just if you're interested, uh, you should go to, okay, you should go to this, um, website of Office of Civic Engagement and, and, and look at the UC Washington DC. And if for more detailed information, I encourage you to schedule an appointment with the uh, office and they will tell you everything that they know. Um, yeah, that's for um, the UC DC internship program. And you can also like choose uh, to do an internship either on UCI campus or off UCI campus near like near the campus in Irvine or like in the near cities like Santa Ana or Costa Mesa. And here at SARC, we do provide a internship database for all the students to uh, to look through. So I'm, I'm going show, to show you right now um, this is our SARC internship database website, and I will, of, of course, post the link later after my presentation to the chat. And I, um, after you open this website, I encourage you to click on either like on-campus or off-campus opportunities based on interest. For example, let's do on-campus opportunities. Th these are the opportunities that we have uh, on campus. And a good thing about this database is that they show you some that some of them is paid. So uh, it is nice for like student to get a paid internship. It's definitely, I think, like help student a lot. Um, let me see. There's another uh, thing I want to show you is that for all the political science students, I encourage you to click on the category of government and public policies. These are the internships that are directly related to uh, the field of political science. So for example, um, if you wanna like do an internship at the World Affairs Council of Orange County, you can click on that. And this uh, Google Doc will show all the requirements uh, for you to be the intern at this place. And this also directs you like to their um, application process. So yeah, um, just take the advantage of our uh, website and database uh, 
I promise that you will find something you like on our SARC database, internship database. And um, another good thing that um, uh, our social School of Social Sciences and SARC offer is that we have a course uh, which is called Social Science 197 that is designed for those who are who have an internship. Uh, basically, this uh, course help you, uh, like basically they this course give you the free like academic credit. If you enroll in a uh, like an internship and you can just uh, show a proof of that internship to our academic direct, uh, SARC director and she will help you approve that and you will be enrolled in the uh, social science net 197 after you're enrolled in the class you will get um, academic credit for it and you will also learn like how to write a resume and how to write cover letter all these uh, homework will help you um, to pre prepare your future job yeah um Another thing that I want to mention is um, to join a club or organization. This will help you to um, be a good candidate. Uh, there are very like um, good clubs that will uh, help you to gain experience in political science on campus. Um, like the example I can give right now, it's Model United Nation mock trial. And if you want to work for a nonprofit organization in the future, uh, I encourage you to join one of the nonprofit organization here at, on campus. For example, I would like to advertise my own uh, like organization. My organization is called Growth and it stands for Growth. Uh, it stands for Global Refugee Organization Working Towards Health and Hope. Um, we're a nonprofit organization helping the refugee community. Uh, we have a um, actually an introduction session today from 5.30 to 6.30 at SSPB uh, 1222. If you would like, you can always come check it out. Yes, so you may ask how to get hired after graduating and how to find like the opportunities um, that are available out there. So I would suggest, uh, suggest to use uh, LinkedIn and Handshake. Uh, these two like webs, like apps are the ones that I have been using. Um, I think they're very helpful. Uh, as like right after you can like you establish a profile, LinkedIn and Handshake will automatically pre like match like find some uh, internships and jobs for you, and um, you can just look through them and like decide which one you want to work for, and all of course. Um, the Ant Eater Network is always helpful. Uh, you can uh, go to your prof professor's office hour and you can ask your friends and classmates uh, like what uh, you should, like what uh, job opportunities there are like on campus and off campus. And um, I also want to show like three of the website here that are listed here. Uh, these are the websites that are great for job searching. Um, they're all similar to each other. So I would just use one example. For example, I'm gonna like show you how to use uh, focus to career. So I often look up the jobs on focus to through the UCI division of career pathways. And uh, when you open the website, you click on get started with focus to career. And yeah, this is what you will see after you log in the website through the UCI Knight ID. Uh, I suggest you to uh, look at the explore any occupation. This is where um, all the fields are, you know, like 
are available. And for example, I want to work for government. Um, no, actually, let, let me use another example so it's easier uh, because there are so many things that are available always in the government. Um, so I would just say foreign service. Um, so let me uh, find foreign service and click on this uh, foreign service officer job. And this website will show you how much um, the, the average that a foreign service officer can make. And this website also uh, tell you what skills you, you need to have in order to be a foreign service officer. Uh, moreover, this website show you uh, like what type of, uh, what kind of working condition you will face when you become a foreign, uh, of foreign service officer. And it's, of course, it's going to tell you the education background that you will uh, need to have in order to be uh, like a good candidate for the uh, foreign office, uh, foreign service officer. So yeah, I think uh, this will be a great website for job searching. I highly recommend before you uh, just blindly look at all the opportunities that are available out there. I recommend you to look through this website and see um, which job will match you the most. Um, that's for job searching. And that's pretty much all I have for now. So do you have any questions? You're welcome to um, type the questions in, in the Q&A. So I will look, look through afterwards. We did have some questions come in, Esther, but I went ahead and, and answered them, but I do wanna provide. Also, uh, I'm going to post the all the links that I just showed you through the presentation right now. You're welcome to like copy and paste all these uh, you know website in your own document and later on you can look uh, you can click on each of them and uh, look through their information. yeah. And Esther, can you hear me? Carissa, did you say anything? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so um, we did get a question come in, but I, I do want to provide some context because I answered it um, over chat. Um, one of the questions was, what are some examples of some entry-level political science jobs? Um, and, and I know that you probably have some something to share about this, but I do want to reiterate that most entry-level jobs, they're mostly going to say bachelor's degree, okay? Um, they're, it's not very common where you'll see you must have a political science degree. They might say bachelor's degree with, let's say, an interest in X, Y, and Z, or perhaps experience in X, Y, and Z that are, might be relate to political science, but usually they won't say political science degree. And so um, most common positions, entry-level positions will either be like a coordinator position, an assistant position, analyst position. So I think the real question is, where do you want to work? What environment do you want to work in? A nonprofit, private sector, government sector, and so forth. And I think political science is very versatile that you can go into all these different spaces. But Esther, maybe what's your experience kind of looking for entry-level positions so far? I like, I would like to know like which, like, how do you say, like it's the person asking about the entry-level positions in government or entry-level positions in other fields? I think entry level in political science specifically is the question. Let me see. Um, I mean that there are a lot. <laughs> like 
a variety of entry level positions that I can think of right now. So uh, anything that is related to like social work, like social public service, like, you know, um, like anything, <laughs> like uh, for example, um, Oh my god sorry uh i think uh you know like people who work uh at the you know um social security office like a social security number office you know what i mean like those uh like different bureaucratic chapters uh like they have you know um from desk jobs that are designed for like, you know, political science or politics or different bureaucratic institutions like that, yeah. Or you can work for like a nonprofit, you can help, um, you know, um, hosting different events, you can like promote different programs and, you know, things like that, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Esther. We got another question in, how difficult is it to get a job right after getting a bachelor's in political science? Do you have to intern or gain experience before anyone will hire you? Well, let me see if I can provide some context to the first question. Maybe Esther, you can provide some context to the second question. Okay. So in terms of how difficult it is, well, probably just as difficult for any student <laughs> getting a job after college. I mean, Everyone's journey is a bit different. Um, you know, yes, you're going to have peers that get a job very quickly. And then you're also going to have peers or maybe yourself that might take a few months to get a position. So where it really comes into play here is just kind of taking the initiative to not only apply to positions, but also utilizing your network and, and who you know to be able to get your resume in front of specific employers. And so you know, it can take a few months, maybe to a year, um, and maybe you might find something that's not quite what you really wanted, but at least it's a foot in the door. But um, in terms of, do you have to intern or gain experience before anyone will hire you? Such a great question. Esther, what's your take on this? I will say yes. I think it's, well, you, you will have like, better chance to get in the jobs that you want because I feel like nowadays like every position is very like competitive <laughs> like you have to have certain background in order to you know get the your desired position or like jobs yeah yeah yes I would agree with Esther um, it's really important to have experience under your belt experience can look very differently you know you could have Let's say some really awesome transferable skills, whether you worked at Starbucks on campus or whether you worked as, let's say, maybe a paralegal or a legal assistant at a law firm. Um, you know, every experience has some really great skills and strengths I'm sure that you can learn along the way. It's just a matter of how you communicate them to an employer in an interview. So hopefully that helps. All right, another question. Is it still possible to be a part of the honors program as a junior who doesn't have any experience in research or is it too late? Maybe Esther, you can take this one on. I will say yes. Uh, I feel uh, in like the current honors program, I know that some students who um, like they do not have like background experience in doing research. So it is like, I don't think it's too late for you to consider like joining the um honors programs in your senior year and the like the suggestion from me is that uh, you should go ahead and like start talking to your professors and tell them that you have an idea of joining uh, honors programs later on yeah I think your professors will be helping helping you out yeah Carissa, I cannot hear you. <laughs> Thanks, Esther. Well, what is the typical entry job or entry level job salary for someone who has a bachelor's in political science? So, Esther, how about you go back to focus to you if you can? Yes, I can. Awesome. So, this is a hard question because salary ranges, well, they depend. 
They depend on the field that you are going into. So let's say maybe the private sector might have a little bit more funding than like the nonprofit sector, for example, or academia. Um, but let's go to the home screen, Esther. Scroll down and we're gonna go up. Oh, can you scroll up a little bit? Keep going where it says, what can I do with a major? That first, there we go. So let's go to oh, economics. Oh. Probably, sorry, I said economics, not political science. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what major are we talking about? <laughs> okay. uh, here. Thank you. So as you can see there on the right hand side or in the middle, you'll see the national mean salary for a lot of these positions. By no means do these are not technically um, entry level, but kind of just on average, if you have a title like this or a position like this, um, this is kind of the salary that you might be looking at. Um, so anything that might be entry level might be a little bit below this. Um, so hopefully this kind of helps, but um, as Esther mentioned, you can click on any of these and they'll give you a description of what this occupation is about. But this is just example titles. If you're just curious as to what do political science majors do after UCI, um, but this can kind of give you some good insight. This is not an exhaustive list of all the occupations that you can get into. Again, at the end of the day, it's all about your skills and what you can bring to the table. Hopefully this helps out. All right, next question. How universal is experience considering political science is such a massive major that goes around so many places? Thinking about applying to an internship at NBC, MSNBC News, because I'm considering going into news media, but could that be something that would help me get a government job or public service job? It's a great question. Esther, do you have any thoughts on that? I will say like, maybe like before you graduate, you can like try to get a like internship at the law firm or like, you know, there are like assistants in the senator's office. Those are the good opportunities if you're considering going to a like government job later on, yeah. Yeah, but either way, having an internship anywhere such as NBC, which sounds really cool, um, Again, it's about how you explain it to an employer, how you talk about your transferable skills and what you learned in news media and, and how that can relate to a future job in the government or public service. And so um, I would say it is very universal. Um, and ultimately, you know, it comes down to what you're interested in and what you're passionate about and how you can apply what you're learning to other positions. So another question is how to find out what you should research on. That is a great question, I think. <laughs> I think you really have to know what you like and what you want to find out about. Like, for example, um, I have been like keeping, you know, track on the like, you know, news about global trafficking. I really like to know like what's going on on the like dark, darker side of the world. And I want to know like, you know, all those, like how the illicit trade operates behind the scenes. So I think it's really like about what you like and based on what you are interested in, you can like find an angle and develop research from there. Yeah. And of course, I encourage you to talk to your professor and think, I think they will guide you through this. Yeah. Thank you, Esther. All right. Last question. Is, is it, it a, go ahead. <laughs> is it a bad idea to try to be a professor in political science since the opportunities for professionalship are so low now? Um, Probably a good question for your professor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should go to the office hour and ask them. 
But I think as long as you're passionate about, I feel like you should go for it. This is like, what, like how I do things. But yeah, it's really, you, sh you should ask this uh, questions to your professor. Yeah. And they will help you out from there. Thank you. Okay, then uh, I think <laughs> it's <laughs> then, then just, you know, I don't know. It depends on you, man. If you want to <laughs> try it out, you can try it out. If not, you can just, you know, there are so many opportunities out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I will have to say, you know, perhaps maybe the professorships here in Southern California are limited. But if you do go out of state, there's probably a little bit more opportunities out there. So I think it depends on your location and where you're willing to locate. Um, not to say that it's not competitive, it certainly is. Um, but, you know, maybe if perhaps teaching is something that you want to do, you may want to consider in what other capacities can I do that with a political science degree? If maybe pursuing your PhD for five to seven years is not something that you want to consider. That is a like, great point. I would mention that uh, you can always like be like, you know, achieve your PhD degree and like work in a foreign country and teach there. Yeah, that's always available. Any other questions? Okay, then like before we go, uh, I would like to, to let you know that uh, here at the Social Science Academic Resource Center, we do help students with finding a research with uh, like applying to grad school and applying for different internships. So if you ever have questions about all like extracurriculum activities and if you have any questions on how to build a resume or cover letter you're always welcome to Sark and we're always here for you and um, you can all, all always like do make an appointment either online or in person yeah so that concludes our webinar thank you everyone for coming I will see you next time or maybe at Sark. Oh, here's, okay. Thank you, Carissa, for helping out. Bye, guys. Have a good day.